Hey guys, I thought it might be cool to make a series about how to make a chorus hit harder. There's various ways of doing this, and depending on the style of music you're working on, depends on what type of techniques you'll use to really make your chorus stand out. In this video, we're gonna be concentrating on something that's a bit more stadium rock, and it's more of a band focused mix. If we were working on a pop mix, we'd probably do things a little bit different, and we'll cover that in a different video. The techniques that we're gonna to use to make the chorus really stand out in this mix is automation, panning, and layering. Let me show you a little bit of this song and how the chorus hits coming out of the pre-chorus. So you get the idea, it goes from that softer pre-chorus into a loud, hard hitting chorus. It already has the advantage for making the chorus pop because it has a softer pre-chorus. But let's have a look at the other ways besides that dynamic that we've made this jump out a bit more. Okay, for starters, let's just look at some basic automation that we can do to help our chorus jump out. So I have all of my tracks here sent to a couple of groups. So all of our drums are coming to the drum bus, all the bass tracks are coming to the bass, all the guitars to the guitar bus and all the vocals. Now on our buses, we can do some simple volume automation to push the chorus up a couple of dB when it hits. This gives it a nice impact and helps it jump out from the section before. So watch the faders as the chorus moves in. Just that little jump in volume adds a big impact. It doesn't have to be a big volume boost, even just a little dB or two can really make a big difference. So we can see on our drum bus here, we jump up from minus 1.5 to zero, and then when the chorus hits, we just have an extra little push right on the impact, an extra dB there. And that sounds like this. So we're getting the drum fill, because that's building up into the chorus, and then a big hit on the first beat. Just giving that little bit of extra impact. And we have a look inside our drum bus too. We have the drum crusher. This is the parallel compression on the drums. So I have this turned down through the verse and the pre-chorus, and then when the chorus comes in, we push this up a few dB. So we're pushing it up almost four dB here. So you can have a look at that. So that little boost of volume on the parallel compression is adding more impact to the drums, as well as the volume on our drum bus is pushing it up and adding that extra impact too. So we're combining those together for extra impact with the drums. So let's have a look at the bass. On our bass bus here, we've got all these different bass channels here. We've got DIs, sans amp, bass head, mics on the cab, and it's all been blended into our bass tone. Now, when the chorus hits, besides that little bit of volume push on the actual bus, we are also pushing up the distortion. We have a dark glass here. So I've got dark glass running on a DI sound and we push that up in the chorus. So the bass goes from something like this. So we're just adding more dirt and grit to the chorus. So that gives the chorus something a little bit new and exciting. Okay, now let's have a look at our guitars. So again, we've got the little boost on our bus, just pushing the guitars up, making it nice and exciting when the chorus hits. But then let's have a look at what happens from the pre-chorus into the chorus. Okay, so we've got these ringing out guitars in the pre-chorus and you can see these are not hard panned. We've got 30 to the left, 30 to the right, and that sounds like this. So when the chorus hits, the guitars get panned hard left and right. So we have these new sounds that come in, our distortion, but then this guitar switches from being lightly panned to hard panned with the automation here. So have a listen to how that panning opens the mix up when it hits. So 
So you can hear it gets a lot wider and bigger sounding. So having those hard pan guitars really opens it up and then it goes into that heavier strumming as well. So it's just adding more impact and making it sound bigger. Having those guitars panned in closer during the verse and the pre-chorus makes the mix feel closer and cozier. And then when the chorus hits, everything just opens up. We're not really introducing any new layers though. So because we're working on a band mix, a lot of the time bands like to keep things realistic. They don't want to add too many extra layers that they can't pull off live unless you know they want to play with backing tracks. And there's still plenty of bands who don't want to do that. So we have to think of ways of how can we make this jump out and get more exciting when we only have the same amount of layers that we're using in the verses and the chorus. How can we make the mix hit harder? And that's where the panning and automation can really make things more exciting, even though it's the same sounds. In the pre-chorus, we have a lead guitar that's doing a little bit of a funky riff. And then when the chorus hits, it goes to a bit more of a dotted delay kind of lead. So in the pre-chorus, it's a little bit more subdued, a bit, bit darker, cozier, kind of sitting in the mix there. When the chorus hits, the lead's a bit brighter and it's a bit more of a stereo effect on it, so it's a bit wider as well. Have a little listen to how that changes. And then let's hear all of the guitars together. So the mix really opens up when the chorus hits, having that hard panning and then having that lead guitar being a little bit brighter and having a stereo effect on it. Now let's have a look at our vocals. They also have a little bit of a bump in volume going into the chorus, but let's have a look at what we have with our layers. The vocals are double tracked the whole way through and you can see when the chorus hits, there's a boost in volume on the double track. So this is gonna make the chorus vocals pop out a little bit more, make them a bit more exciting. Now besides that, you can see there's another little bit of automation going on behind this. If we have a look, we're actually pushing the drive up on this satin plugin. So we're adding some tape distortion and drive to the vocals here and really driving it. You can hear it when the vocals hit, they're a lot more saturated. And that's because that double track is actually getting quite distorted. Think I'll break before I bend. You said it's never what it seems to be. So you can hear it's really quite driven and that's just adding a really nice saturation effect to the vocal as well as with that extra volume on the double track, adding some nice chorus effect to it. And if we also take a look at our vocal bus here. We're also driving in some more effects for the chorus. So we've got a plate reverb and we're just pushing that up a little bit through the chorus to just add some more space. Some other things you can do with automation is put on some delays and throw delays. So you can have a look here. We've got a bit of automation adding some delay to the vocals. You said it's never what it seems to be. I've got a secret. So you can hear that little bit of echo that goes on there. And that's just because we're pushing in a little bit of extra delay there. And even through the chorus, just having a bit of delay going on. Whereas in the verse and the pre-chorus, there is no delay. So automating in effects. And that's a really big way of just adding some extra color to your chorus and make it sound different from the section before. So all of those things combined are really making the impact of the chorus substantial. While they're all kind of small moves, they all stack up into one big move for the chorus. So now that you know all of that's going on, let's listen to the transition again from the pre-chorus into the chorus, paying attention to the guitars panning, the drums impact with that extra bit of parallel compression coming in, and the bass having a little bit extra drive on it, and the vocals having the double tracks push up in the chorus, as well as a bit more saturation and effects with reverb and delay. So 
pretty cool. Just a couple of simple little things can really make a big impact to your chorus. So if you're working on a band mix and you're finding it a little bit hard to get the chorus to jump out, maybe consider trying some of these tips out. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. You said it's